Hi, I'm Lake. I'm Keith. We're from Total Seal Piston Rings, and in our last video, we were explaining the basics of piston rings, how a traditional, typical ring set for a four-cycle engine is actually three rings, a top, a second, and an oil ring, and they've got these pretty basic jobs, three basic jobs, actually, yep. of compression sealing, oil control, and heat transfer. But as we mentioned in that video, there's more to that than meets the eye because depending upon the application, what you're going to do with your engine, the choice of ring material, design, coating can vary quite widely. In fact, I was thinking about it the other day, Keith, a good analogy for this is someone that's restoring a tractor engine. Say they got an old tractor engine and they're rebuilding it. Well, if they're just restoring it to be able to go to some shows and things like that, where it's not going to be a working engine, I guess they could just go back and say, whatever was in there before, just a cast ring, they could just go back and just do it the way it was as new. Absolutely, they can, let's call it, you know, replace and duplicate. Yep, there we go. It's been out there working for 60, 70, 80, who knows, 100 years. And I just want the same thing that it had. And, and, and we're good with that. Because the thing's not gonna run that much, it's just, you're, you're just restoring it, right? You're, and so it's not going to run much. It's not going to run hard. So it's not really that big of a deal. Absolutely. But then again, maybe, maybe he's going to take it to an antique tractor pole. That's true. Or he wants to do kind of, we'll say, hop it up a little bit. Well, you know, the reality is there's a lot of these old tractors that still work. They still go plow fields every day. So now all of a sudden, if it's going to be doing more work and it needs to last longer, well, just that putting it back the way it was probably isn't the best idea. There's some more modern ideas you could do that could actually make it more efficient and work better. A hundred percent. You know, traditionally rings out of those types of engine were just plain old cast iron, plain old flat faces, no coatings, just put it in. It could be more than three rings. Oh gosh, it could be five rings, eight rings. You'd be amazed how many they'd stack on them back in those days. Still got blow by, put another ring on it. A little more oil control, put another ring on it. So a lot of these guys, when they're, when they're say, a little open to modernizing the package, we can look at better materials, better coatings, mm -hmm. three-piece style oil rings versus the old cast iron oil rings. And maybe, just maybe, we can take some of those rings off that old piston. Maybe, you know, cut a little friction and cut a little cost. Absolutely. So depending upon the application is going to be what direction you go. And we didn't even cover the third one yet, which is let's say you are doing tractor pulling. Well, now that you definitely need a different ring material to handle the more heat. You're going to have to have a better coating to reduce the friction because it's competition. And you may want to get rid of that conventional gap and go gapless to be able to make more power. Absolutely. That blow by reduction and that increase in ring seal as we all know, we've talked about in the past, it's going to reduce temperature in the oil pan of the oil contamination, but especially in some of these old engines, when you're trying to reuse the old pistons, it's going to build more cylinder pressure. It's going to act like it's got a higher compression piston in it than what it actually came with. Because as we all know, some of those back in the day, you know, five to one, woohoo, baby, we're getting up there. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's interesting when you start thinking about the application is going to dictate what their material choices and designs are. And that's really the key is that, you know, your line you've always said in many, many videos, and I've known you for years, is make you your first call, not the last call. And that's really what it is. is there's a lot of options out there. We're, we're not even talking about sizing yet. Oh, yeah, gosh, just materials, coatings. We, we need that contact to know what it is you want this to do. What are, what are your expectations? I mean, obviously we want it to seal up and we want it to last, but what are you doing with it? Is it, you know, normally aspirated small block? Is it a big block with twin turbos? You know, is it a mountain motor with, you know, five stages of nitrous on it? I mean, you're, you know, use your imagination of how crazy it can get. We have to make sure you're getting the right stuff that's gonna survive that environment. So let's go back to our tractor analogy. So the guy with the old tractor that's just restoring it just for taking it to shows, a cast ring with no coating on it would be just fine. 100%. What's he gonna use it, 100 miles a year? Right. You know, on a good deer? <laughs> yeah, if. <laughs> but if you're plowing fields, you probably would want more of a ductile iron ring, but maybe like a chrome face coating, something like that, that's a little more durable, so it's gonna have more lasting use. A absolutely, that, that tractor may go out there and run eight, 10, 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
he hops off, he's got a power takeoff on it, he's out there using it for something else, it never shuts off. So in the big picture of things, it may not get, you know, as we'll say, a lot of miles, but man, it's got a lot of hours on it because it's being used for a lot of different things. So we've got to make sure we use the right materials, put some good anti-friction coatings on there, and we're going to extend the longevity of that engine you know, hard to say how long, but we'll get a lot more life out of it than that. The more durable faster. ring is going to equal a more durable engine. Yeah. It's that I, simple. I love to say it's going to go another hundred years, but uh, uh, I, who knows? But it's going to last longer and have less friction. But if you're doing tractor pulling and we're running boost and we're running methanol or something, who knows what kind of crazy stuff they're doing, right? Everything in the kitchen sink, pour it on in. So now we're talking about maybe a steel ring and a PVD coating. And maybe we're going from a conventional gap to a gapless ring at that point because the application is gonna be dictating these key details. Absolutely, we get the question every single day of the week, you know, what ring do I need? And the first question is, what are you doing with it? Because we have to address that. We've gotta make sure that the right coating, the right materials, the right tensions, that combination, that package of parts is right for what you're doing. And, and this is one of the things we've got to be real careful with when we buy a, a quote unquote rotating kit. Mm -hmm. You get some really good parts in that kit, but are the rings right for what you're doing? So again, make that call. Let us know what you're looking at doing. You want to buy you know, XYZ's kit. Well, maybe that kit's great, but does it have the right ring for what you're doing? You know, a perfect example of that, if you have a Nicosil coated cylinder, these are the wrong oil rings for you. Not because it's maybe the wrong size, which it probably would be if you have a two cycle. <laughs> <laughs> but the reality is that chrome face coating on these oil rails is incompatible with Nicosil. 100%. You wanna, you wanna ruin a Nicosil cylinder, put hard chrome on it. It does accept quite a few coatings, but hard chrome like that on that oil ring, uh, that's gonna be a disaster area. So that's why we are saying the key thing before you buy a set of piston rings is understand your application. Know what it is and material design, but also what you're doing. Based on what it is and what you're trying to do, we can help you sort out and get you the correct rings with the right coatings, the right materials for your application. Absolutely, we wanna make sure that it goes together and it meets your expectations and doesn't give you that will say shortfall where you're rebuilding all of a sudden because it just simply wasn't the right ring set. Because if you don't do your homework before you buy the rings, pretty likely you're gonna buy the wrong rings and it's no fun by the time you take it apart. And if you file fitted them, uh, it's a bad day. Yeah. And, and nobody likes taking an engine back out of a car. No, piston rings are not easy to get to. It's way easier to change your oil than it is to change your piston ring. So it's worth doing your homework on the front side before you buy your piston rings.